Do you want to start a wedding photography business? Stick around and I will show you the essentials that you need to know in order for you to start a successful wedding photography business. I know most of you are asking how did you start wedding photography. I started off as a hobbyist when I got my first DSLR camera which was the Nikon D5300 and back then I was just shooting everything and anything that I came across so I never specified, I didn't have a taste, I didn't have a style when I was starting out. Later on I developed more interest and I started doing fashion photography via paid clients. I did that for a short period of time and then I developed more interest and I started filming wedding photography and that is something that I love doing and currently as we speak I'm a professional wedding and portrait photographer based here in Nairobi Kenya and I'm humbled to be recognized as one of the best in the region Africa and also in the country here in Kenya. My first wedding photos were not that good really to be honest even when I look at those files sometimes I feel embarrassed for the kind of photos that I took back then but I never gave up I continued learning and over a period of time I mastered the craft I did my second wedding I did the third one and as we speak I've done hundreds of weddings and this is what I do for a living if you're interested in mastering the craft of wedding photography you're in the right place and I'm going to take you through a series of wedding photography that is going to be broken down into different segments of wedding photography. So guys, stay tuned, hit the subscribe button and let's start rolling. Let's first talk about what you need to do to start wedding photography. Number one, you need to find inspiration from other photographers. You can check them out via Instagram, Twitter and other social media platforms, their websites, learn their style, learn what they do, read their Instagram stories and see their successes and failures through that and through mirroring other photographers who are already established and successful in the industry, you're going to be able to learn a lot and you're going to preempt situations which you can overcome and also you're going to master the craft within a short period of time. If there's only one thing that you're going to get out from this particular video, is that you need to treat your wedding photography as a business from day one. Invest in nice gear, and by nice gear, I mean something like a good body, like you can see mine behind here, a good lens, that is the 50 millimeter next to the D850. And uh, the other item that you're seeing in the background, which is blood, is the Godox V1 Lite. So this is a minimal, gear that can start you off well. If you have a lower budget, you can do maybe the Nikon Z6 Mark II, which I'm filming this video with. Or you can also purchase the Nikon D750, which the prices have dropped drastically. You can start off with that camera and also build yourself over time and build your arsenal of gear over a period of time. Currently, I'm using the Nikon D850 and I'm filming it with a 85mm f1.8 50 millimeter f1.8 and other variety of lenses that I hire out from uh, suppliers. You need to start from scratch and if you're able to afford good gear, the better because good gear is going to make your work more efficient. You're going to produce higher quality images and you're going to wow your clients with the kind of images that you're going to deliver to them. Start as a second shooter. Personally, I learned a lot as a second uh, photographer for other established photographers who were great at that time. I learned a lot and being a second shooter is a great opportunity for you to mirror your mentors or those who have already made it in the industry and you're going to learn about many things, about how they handle clients, about how they handle different situations, about how they create their images and you're going to learn so much by being a second photographer. By being an associate photographer, it simply means you're going to get bookings from photographers who are already established and they have so much work. So you're going to be subcontracted by them and you're going to get wedding gigs that are going to enable you to grow your craft and also 
you're going to get some form of mentorship from them because they are going to guide you on how they need their photos delivered, how how you need to do this and this. So it is a great opportunity for you to learn and also to mirror your mentors and also get the required skills to run your photography business. Start small. It is something I overlooked when I was starting out, but later on, I caught up with the situation. I started doing two hours intimate sessions, one hour engagement sessions, and I built my skills over time. I learned how to engage with my clients. I learned how to do posing for my couples. When you start small, it relieves you of the pressure of being a wedding photographer. So you start small and you build slowly towards your goal or towards your bigger aspirations. There is one thing that you need to keep at the back of your mind every time you're planning to do a wedding photography session because this is a special day. This is a day that the couple are so happy about. This is a once in a lifetime day. Once you're going there to shoot and you're moody, you're low energy, you're sad, you're stressed, the couple are going to notice, even the bridal party, they're going to notice, and this will affect their mood. It will affect even the way you're going to take the photos because the energy you're going to give them is the energy they are going to reciprocate. Go there, be happy, be ex excited, leave your stress at home, come at the wedding party, be at your highest level in terms of energy, happiness, you're psyched up, you're happy for them genuinely. This way, the environment you're going to create is going to also reflect the kind of images that you're going to create. So guys, Keep that at the back of your mind because once you're going to film a wedding or photograph a wedding and you're moody, you're stressed, you're low, you're bored, you're not sociable, it's going to affect even the way their clients and their friends are going to perceive you. If you're able to bring two cameras, the better because you can have like, for instance, one camera attached with the 50 millimeter f1.8 or even f1.4, it doesn't matter and another camera which has a longer lens maybe a 70 to 200 mil so you can have two options and whenever you want to switch it is easier for you you can't miss a moment because of the hassle that it takes to remove a lens and replace it with another one or go where the camera bag is pick another lens rush to the moment you're going to look like a confused fella and you're not going to look like a professional so if you're able to afford to have two cameras during a wedding you can have one with a wider lens and the other one with a telephoto lens and you're going to switch them fast and efficiently and you're not going to miss a moment during the wedding. Make a professional website. This professional website will serve as your portfolio and just think about it. How can you run a successful business when you're running it via social media, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, YouTube, Twitter? It kind of looks chaotic. So you need to harness your craft, harness your portfolio and put it in one place. Keep it clean, keep it neat, short and simple. Don't make it too wordy. Just have a nice, elegant website that showcases your work and showcases what you can do in an elegant manner that can tell quickly the client your style, the way you, you like to present yourself, the kind of photos you take and how they can be able to book you and also show your pricing so that you can cut off clients who just want to inquire and they don't know even the kind of price range they want. By having a price range or a package or a price at which your packages start from, you're able to attract clientele whom you'd like to serve. Once you've documented two or three weddings and your couples are really happy about your services, you can ask them to leave reviews on your website and also on the review platforms that are available for you this way, you're going to build credibility over a period of time and other newer couples will be able to see the kind of reviews your previous clients left. And this is going to solidify your personality, your craft, your business and your brand. And you're going to get more clients from those referrals. Once you've already been booked to document a wedding, make sure you request your couple to at least allocate you two hours on their wedding program so that you can be able to take amazing wedding party photos, amazing portraits of the couple in their wedding attire. 
So this way you are going to be able to get some nice elegant photos for yourself to build your portfolio and also for the couple that they can be able to use to mount or frame or print them out and also by printing them out you're going to make extra money be smart about this create amazing portraits and ask your couple to at least allocate you an hour or two hours so that you can be able to create amazing stunning photos network and grow your business by doing so you are able to engage and build relationships with other wedding service providers for example you can maybe engage with the wedding coordinator the wedding planner or even the cake matron these are people who can be able to recommend you to other brides and other couples you can start off by giving them free wedding photos that you've taken in a wedding event that they have done work at maybe the decor lady you can share with her some decor photos that you took during the wedding and she'll be able to tag you and also recommend you to other brides once you've built that relationship if you're kind of nervous about starting a wedding photography business you can start off small by doing small family sessions couple sessions or even senior portraits and then build your skill level build slowly and also get more confident doing photos of a group of people and then slowly you're going to find yourself into wedding photography business this is my final bonus tip for you guys if you're a person who gets headaches during high pressure situations i'll highly advise you to come along with painkillers because a wedding is a high pressure situation but personally for me it's a simple thing because i've done it over a period of time so i'm comfortable doing weddings i've never had a headache even when i was starting out but honestly speaking when i was starting out i was kind of nervous so i had a bottle of water which when i was feeling a little bit of nervous i took a sip of water and i will come down and focus on the settings and the camera and the posing and then the nervousness will just go away so for you guys if you kind of feel like you're going to be really scared or afraid to start off as a wedding photographer you can start off as a second shooter by doing so you're going to get more confident in the process and also you're not going to panic and you're not going to mess somebody's once in a lifetime moment do a discovery consultation this is so important because you're going to be able to learn about your couple before you book them you're going to be able to learn about their expectations you're going to set specific boundaries in regards to shooting imagine a scenario whereby you're at a wedding event and your couple request you to climb a tree so that you can take a specific kind of photo you're going to be able to refuse because you've already refused even in the meeting and you've already set certain expectations and even in your contract it clearly says that you're not going to be able to engage in taking photos in a scenario whereby you're going to cause risk or harm to yourself and also your couple or their wedding party or guests one final thing that you must have before you book a wedding client is having a wedding contract the contract is legally binding and you're going to be able to protect yourself and also the client in specific scenarios through the wedding contract you're going to be able to set boundaries and have everything that you have agreed on in written form and you're going to have a clearly well neat organized document that clearly states what you have agreed on the package you've offered the amount of money they need to pay and by what date what needs to happen this time and this time a wedding contract is so important guys and i urge you never ever do any wedding photography service without a wedding contract i learned something in regards to that the hard way and i'm highly 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 recommending that you must have a wedding contract because it's going to tie you down when you don't have one and the client can decide to say ah i'm not i'm not interested in paying you the balance because i was not satisfied with the photos but you never set out the expectations through the wedding contract you never had one you never agreed on the price you never agreed on the amount they needed to pay and by what date a contract is a legally binding document and you're going to save yourself from so much hassle and from toxic clients who just want to bring you chaos have a wedding contract template that you can always fill up the names and the details and the dates 
whenever a client decides to book you. It will mean so much if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. It will enable me create more meaningful content in future and you're going to enjoy the content that I'm going to create and also you're going to learn from it. Thank you so much and stay tuned. Subscribe and share this particular video with your colleagues and your friends. Another important thing that you need to learn for you to start a wedding photography business is to start doing 